This is the best CPU and motherboard combos to buy for gaming and productivity in 2023. Building PC is one of the coolest things to do, but buying components could be difficult. Is AMD better than Intel? Which motherboard to choose? And are these PC parts even compatible with each other? If you're budget aware, you're probably looking at Intel i5 or AMD Ryzen 5. The next obvious step is the motherboard selection. But what if I tell you that's not the case anymore? Since the release of the new generation of Intel and AMD CPUs, most of the manufacturers focus on high-end motherboards, Intel Z790 and AMD X670 or X670E. Mid-range motherboards or budget options are hard to find and in most cases they share the same price tag of the premium selection. Today we've put together two CPU motherboard combinations. On the left side of the screen we have Intel i5-13500 for $248. Motherboard pair is Asus Z790-PY5 for $240. It is a solid board, we've tested it, so you wanna see the video, click here. On the right side, we have Ryzen 5 7600 for 220 bucks, paired with Asus X670-P motherboard for $270. The total cost of each pair is around 500 bucks. Both of the CPUs include box coolers, so we don't have to worry about cooling solution. Intel's new 65W TDP cooler doesn't struggle as much as I thought it would. It keeps 100W chip at 87C. AMD package power is half of the Intel at 53 watts, And the cooler does its job and keeps things at 88C, but probably in need of the redesign. Intel 13500 has advantage of 8 extra cores for the total of 14 compared to very lonely 6 core group on AMD side. CPU usage DaVinci Resolve Puget Bench test hovers around 40%, where it seems like Intel XC integrated graphics does all the work. CPU usage drops down to 10% utilization during effects encoding process. This normal? Here's what 13900K and RTX 4080 looks like. Close to 100% utilization, actually on both CPU and GPU, which means that Core i5 simply doing nothing while waiting on integrated graphics to complete the task. The task that results in 380 overall Puget Bench score and 2220 with Intel i9 and RTX 4080. And that's a bit embarrassing and hopefully we'll see new Intel Arc encoders in the future. AMD SoC behavior is even wilder. During H.264 encode, GPU does nothing, or so it seems. AMD does have hardware optimization for H.264, it's just not reflected in Task Manager. AMD Ryzen 5 7600 score is 400. So these extra eight cores from Intel don't really matter when you do casual video editing. One quick note though, Intel timeline responsiveness is better. Now let's talk gaming. Gamers, Time Spy CPU test. Intel i5 scored 10,519, while AMD Ryzen 5 scored 8,205. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Intel system 5224 frames, AMD Ryzen 5 1014. Rocket League tells a different story. Intel i5 has average of 85 FPS, AMD Ryzen 5 98. Cinebench Intel CPU 20,692, AMD CPU 13,782. Boys, what it feels like, Intel i5 is better than Ryzen 5. Even Blender proves us right. It took 5 minutes and 12 seconds for Intel system and 6 minutes and 41 seconds for AMD. As I go through the benchmarks, yeah, Intel is better, but wait, there's a case for AMD chip. Ryzen 5 7600 is Basically, 5600G we looked at a couple of years ago. So if you're in a budget where discrete GPU is out of the question at the moment, stick with AMD. This is your ticket to enjoy brand new AIM5 platform with DDR5 support and PCIe 5.0. And on top of that, AMD promised to support it for another couple of years. So here's a pro tip for you, for free. Get RTX 3060 later and then game on the budget. The other concern is the price tag of AMD motherboards and if it's worth it. Look, on paper, X670 will last longer than Z790. You dig? But I'm not sure if you should care. You know that Intel makes you buy a new motherboard every two years, while AMD AM5 platform is going to be around for quite some time. But let me ask you this and put it in the comment. How often do you upgrade your PC? 
Because in my opinion, you should pick the best solution that is available right now. You're not going to win the race. Let's take a closer look at X670N compared to Z790 motherboard. Asus Prime X670-P, total of 14 VRM phases, rated at 60 amps, which is very good. One PCIe 4.0 by 16, two PCIe 4.0 by four speeds, and one PCIe 3.0 by one slot. Now this is exciting. M.2 slot supports PCIe 5.0 for future proofing. And then we have two more M.2s with 4.0 speed. Connectivity is solid, USB 3.0 20 gig, three USB 10 gigs, four USB 5 gigs, and two USB 2.0s for keyboard and mouse. Asus Prime Z790-P, total of 15 VRM phases, rated at 50 amps, again, very solid. One PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot, three more PCIe 4.0 by 16, and one PCIe 3.0 slot. That's two PCIe 4.0, and then two more M.2s, USB 20 gig, USB 10 gig, USB 5 gig and 4 USB 2.0. Both of the motherboards are more than suitable to handle power consumption of any CPU from Intel or AMD lineup. You can upgrade CPU later if you want. The difference between two is PCIe 5.0 support for GPU on Intel platform or M.2 PCIe 5.0 on AMD. None of these are mainstream and unnecessary. USB connectivity though it matters and it's better on AMD board. Both are solid choices for the price. But if you're not a fanboy, Intel i5-13500 is the obvious choice. AMD Ryzen 5 is a bit disappointing this time around. Learn about DDR5 scam by watching this video and join the freaking Discord.